Are you hopeful or confident that we will see it uh, carry on into tomorrow's session? We spoke earlier today, sort of described a lot of the action on the market as anemic. Well, if we have a look at the market, it was really a tale of two halves today. In the morning, we saw a new two-and-a-half-month uh, low reach for the market, a new low in this correction, and we saw concerns about the U.S. outlook really weighing on the market and the scramble into those defensive areas like the uh, consumer staples, the utilities, and the telecom se sectors. But as you mentioned, once that Reserve Bank decision on interest rates came out, we saw a very different performance and a very different uh, reaction on the Australian share market. In fact, if we have a look, 4,550 points was the area that the market had been struggling to get past in the morning. But after that rates decision, we shot through that mark. It was a very positive performance. And I guess the turnaround was centered around the large cap stocks in our market. In fact, the top 20 were the main beneficiaries. And the top 20 were the main beneficiaries because the biggest sectors on our market saw the biggest turnarounds. We saw that financial sector with the banks, the property market doing well, but also the material space. And that's an interesting area. We saw a key turnaround in stocks like BHP, Billiton, Rio Tinto. And if we have a look at the material space, you have to ask yourself, well, why do we see a, a change in the material sector when we see the Reserve Bank keeping rates on hold? And that's because rising interest rates tends to be a negative for the Australian share market, especially from the 1st of July when you're going to see a 50% discount applied to interest up to $1,000 on things like term deposits. So cash uh, becomes a lot more of a competitor to investments in the stock market. So it does look like this rates decision seen as a positive and we did see a big turnaround in the market, the market ending flat. The bank and the interest rate outlook uh, and some of the global issues as well in the next segment after the break will be joined by a suite of economists. So we might focus on a little bit of the corporate news out today. Julia Lee, I wanted to start with Macquarie Group. Um, not the best today. Shares ending down over 2%. City slashing its rating to a sell and savaging in terms of commentary. Look, this isn't surprising. We've been watching Macquarie Group for a while. We've seen the shares trading at these multi-year lows. But really, if you buy into Macquarie Group, what you're buying into is that market conditions are improving, that we're starting to see volumes improving, more IPOs coming to market and more corporate activity. And we're not seeing that at the moment. So without that sort of catalyst, there's really no reason to be buying into Macquarie shares. We know that the return on equity is now under around about the 8% mark. And so really to see a turnaround in that return on equity measure, which we use for a lot of those financial stocks, we need to see a pickup in activity in terms of the Australian market. I mean, this week has been a case in point. A lot of the Asian markets have been closed on Monday, which contributed to the low volumes. Mm -hmm. But even today, we saw very anemic volumes going through the market despite a key event like the interest rate decision. So until volumes and corporate activity uh, bounce back, I, I guess Macquarie Group's model really not working, especially given the large headcount that they have. So if we do see headwinds such as instability in global markets, a downturn in global markets, well, that headcount is going to be a, a key, key thing that they're going to have to deal with.